This is me, the Undead Viking, and this might bring back some memories to a lot of you. Yes, I am one of the original backers of D-Day Dice uh, back in the day when it first uh, was released. Man, that was, you know, that was a long time ago. And 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 the cool thing is, is that um, you know, somewhere in my collection, my old D-Day Dice with all my expansions and everything is there. Uh, but um, this. This is still brought with me. This is like my gaming bag that I use uh, all the time. I, I, I bring it with me uh, to game night. I bring it with me to conventions. Um, and you know, and, and it's it's definitely a weathered the, the years and the test of time. It's even got a rip somewhere. I forget where it is. Oh yeah, right there. It's got a little tiny rip right there. But it is holding strong and it is awesome. And whenever I see this, I get a smile on my face because I really, really liked uh, the D-Day dice game. I, I, I just, I, it was, it was one of those first really big Kickstarter success stories, and, um, there's a great, I mean, there's tons of stories around it, and, 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 and the, and the process that it went through to, to for fulfillment and everything like that, and I'm not going to rehash all that, that's kind of like ancient history, but if you want to, like, Board Game Geek, or you go to the old Kickstarter page for the original D-Day dice, you can definitely check that out, and, um, you might be interested in reading up on that, uh, but, um, the cool thing is, is that uh, I was contacted and asked if I wanted to take a look at the next edition. And since I really, really love the first one so much, I jumped at the chance to do this. And I'm really excited to talk about it with you today. So, um, I'm going to show you how to play. Uh, you know, it is it is a cooperative game. It is a game of, well, dice, as you can probably guess, because it says D-Day Dice. And, um, you know, like I said, it was a game that I really, really loved. And I really, really love this new edition just as well. So, uh, let me show you uh, how the game is played. Shouldn't take too long, and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you why I think maybe you should put this in your collection. All right, so here we go. This is the classic uh, Beachhead D-Day dice scenario in which each player is uh, in control of a unit of soldiers <clears throat> that are trying to get to the bunker and, uh, and control it. Uh, this is a cooperative game, as I said, and uh, you can play with up to four people. It plays really well solo. As a matter of fact, the old school version of it, which I have, um, <clears throat> I played that one more solo than anything else. Uh, but this game, I've set up two players. Um, I've set up, uh, like, the British and uh, the American unit. And uh, in this case, all of them have to succeed. They all have to get to the bunker and be in there with at least one soldier still alive. Uh, and then when that happens, uh, you win. If any of the players uh, die along the way, it is considered, even if, like, you were playing with four players and, like, three of them made it into the bunker... Uh, and but one failed and, and died along the way. Uh, that's like uh, it, it puts like the, the the storyline is that uh, it, it, it puts your troops into a disarray and it's going to allow the enemy to regroup and uh, and then you know, launch a counterattack, and so ultimately um, you, you failed in your mission. Uh, so your whole goal in this whole process is that you're going to be working your unit up the beach and eventually into the bunker uh, and, and to take it over. Along the way, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be rolling your six dice. Uh, these dice are in this red, white, and blue, <coughs> which is important, and I'll show that when I actually roll the dice and show you how the game is played. Uh, but before I actually say that, for, just want to mention one quick thing, is that this is what a die is going to look like in the final version of the game. Um, it's going to have all these little icons, <coughs> skulls and medals and tools and, and troops and what have you. Uh, this is like, they sent me one of these, uh, for the prototype. Uh, instead, what I have is just normal six-sided dice, and these dice, when you get them, are going to be in red, white, and blue as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, in this case, you know, I, I, we do have these things that will tell you, like, a one is a skull, a two is a star, and so on and so forth. Um, so when I show you how to play, you know, that's, just keep that in mind. Um, also, uh, like, you are going to have these, these, these little boards here, uh, that you're going to use to keep track of, 
uh, like how many you have. Like each person starts with four soldiers, so I have four of my mini poker chips on there. Those are my mini poker chips. Um, I suppose you could write on these if you want to. I don't know exactly what they're going to do with the Kickstarter as far as how to keep track of that. Uh, but, you know, just so you know, these won't be a little paper pad probably, and you're not going to have my mini poker chips anyway uh, to keep track of those things. All right, so just I want to talk about the board really quick and the cards that you're seeing around you before I actually show you how the game works. Uh, so uh, each spot on the board has one of these kind of like this little shield uh, uh, icon in there. And some of them are black and some of them are white. And I'll explain the difference between those two in just a second. But the big thing is, is the number that's on them. And what that is, is that that is the number of casualties you're going to have uh, on that spot if you, you when you're there uh, during your turn. So, like, if you notice at the very beginning, we're landing on the beach, you know, the, the, the there's incoming fire, but it isn't as bad as when we get up here. And there's going to be, like, three. So we're going to lose three soldiers no matter what. And notice you start with four, you know, because they show you start with four over here. So you're going to survive. Even if you don't roll a single soldier and don't get any recruits in the very first turn, you're going to be able to survive to the next turn. But if you don't... <laughs> It's in your best interest to get some more somehow. Um, but as you move forward, you can see like there's six and eight, and there's a four here, and some other things. So that's a, a thing that when you're planning on, you really want to make sure you're looking at that and, and telling what's going on. Now, there one of the rules about the game is that you can never go backwards. So like once you move here, you can't go back here. and But you can move to the side. But you can't go back to a spot that you've already been at. So as you're moving at the board, you must plot your movement, knowing full well that you can never backtrack uh, on a location that you've uh, already visited. Another thing is, is that you can't just sit and just, you know, cultivate stuff in the spot that you're at. And any spot that has a white background to their shield, you're allowed to stay there for three turns before they're going to force you to move forward. Um, in, in, in this case, like the dice that you're going to have are going to have these little chevrons on them, and then you're just going to turn them over each time. In this case, we just have like one, so it'll be one, and then we move it over to two, and so on and so forth. And then once we get to four, we're going to have to keep, we're going to have to move forward. Now, the big difference is these spots that have these, uh, the black, uh, shield on there, you can't stay there. You get there and you're going to have to move the next round. You have no option. You have to keep going. So that's something you have to keep in mind. All right. So uh, and this is going to jump around a little bit with the rules. So just bear with me really quickly here. So this spot, you're going to notice that there's these little signs here. And there's signs here. And you're going to notice that you're going to see those signs there and there as well. And also all the way over here. That's a minefield. Uh, when you cross that particular stretch of land uh, unless you have certain items like you have like a minesweeper you can get uh like you have to roll a die and that's going to just be extra casualties you're going to suffer so in case if you went from here to here that would be an extra four casualties that you'd have to suffer going through there and you roll for each unit now the units can move together like we can move together you would roll separately for each one so the first one you get four the next one you get three you know because it's, it's 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 a it's it's a minefield you know there is a uh like a randomness to what's going to happen uh here, you'll notice that there's, like, it might be tough to see, but you see there's this six-sided there, and there's this little, like, like crosshairs there. Um, that stands for machine gun fire. Anytime you're in a spot that has machine gun fire, you're also going to roll a D6, and you're going to add that number to the casualty. So you can see, whereas these two have an 8, and that's just a constant. It's going to be an 8 if you're there. This one has a four, but it has the chances to be even higher in case in which you roll, uh, you know, for the six-sided on there. All right, and then also you're gonna notice that there is a symbol of like a binoculars, uh, this little like uh, a little metal thing here, and also another little uh, symbol there. What those are is those designate these special soldiers uh, that you can get in, into your uh, particular uh, group. So like this one over there, um, that stands for a sharpshooter. And, you, and I'll explain how you get these into your, uh, into your, like, into your uh, unit or whatever. Uh, that, that, that middle that stands for the hero, and then that stands for a scout. Here's that minesweeper I was talking about. He's a person that ignores the landmines if they're with you. Um, so what that tells you is that if you're going to get to these locations, you have to use... Uh, you have to have that unit, that person, 
in your unit to be able to travel to that next spot. So, you know, you can't, uh, like, so that's one of those things where it kind of makes you, like, uh, you can't just focus on one thing. I'm just going to get a ton of dudes, right? I'm just going to get army, more, more army, more army, more army. But, you know, you're going to get here, and you're going to need something specific to move forward. You'll also notice over here, they have these little medals of one, two, three, or four. Now, what those are is those are the courage that it's going to take for your unit to keep moving forward. And that's another resource that you have to roll dice to collect. You'll notice there's a spot for it on the player boards as well. So that's another thing that you have to make sure that you maintain and, and control uh, and, and gain as well. Now, I didn't even show you how to play, but here I'll show you really quick. So um, you'll also notice like there's this spot with this little skull and crossbones like here and here, and they have a unit type, like here's the scout, here's the minesweeper. That means to move there, not only do you have to have that particular person, it's going to kill that particular specialist in your group as well. Notice up here, it's going to, you, and you, this, this is for the whole thing, to climb up here. One, there's machine gun fire up here, which, you know, uh, and two, like, you have to kill your medic if once you climb up there as well. So, the game does, as you move further and further up the beach, gets progressively more and more deadly and more and more difficult uh, as, as you continue along. So just uh, just keep all that in mind as we go. Now, um, the way the game works, uh, the mechanism is, and this is like a lot of like dice rolling games, and everybody rolls their dice at once. So you can all work together as far as talking about, um, you know, which, which route are you going to take? What are you going to collect? Um, you know, what, what do you want to? And there are benefits to moving together as well. Um, if you move together, you're able to, you know, make trades. Like, you can, you, once you, you know, turn your dice in and turn them into uh, resources, you can make trades. So, like, if somebody was down to one troop, you could say, okay, well, here's two troops. So, like, you have a chance to survive, that kind of thing. And that goes the same for, you know, like, the other resources as well. So there is a bonus as far as that is concerned. Uh, but what happens is, what you're going to do is, and I'm not going to go through each and every turn, what you do is you roll um, you roll all six of your dice, and and you're going to, eh, that's a really weird roll, uh, doubles on, I, that, that's crazy, wow, doubles on the all the colors. Uh, I, I, maybe I'm going I'm to go buy a lottery ticket right now or something. But anyway, so what, what you do then is after you roll, you have to take two of these dice, and you have to lock them. And when you lock them, that means they cannot be re-rolled. Now, then after you lock two, then you're, you can take... And you don't... You know, like if she said, okay, I'm going to lock this two and this five. I'm going to lock those two. Now, I could roll all four of these dice again. If Now, if I wanted to save one of these sixes, I could say, oh, I'm going to save that six, though, and I'm going to roll these three. You, you can definitely save, but the two that you lock are locked. You, you can't ever unlock them later. So you have to make sure you pick really well. So then, let's say you save that six, then you're going to roll again, see what you get, and so now we have, you know, we have these like two threes, maybe we take them, now we're going to roll this one again, and then you do your final roll. And then you're going to collect your rewards off of off of that gets done. So that's the basic mechanism. But there are some little, like, tricks and hoops that you're going to go and you're going to jump through. Now the big thing is, is that once again, like, you have these dice results. And I didn't roll any ones, so I didn't have to show you. But ones, technically, most of the time are going to be bad. What it does is that basically, not only does the one, like, uh, not really give you anything, um, except for one uh, situation. I'll explain that in just a little bit. Um, but it also makes you basically delete another die that you rolled. So like, if you had another die that had something really good, you'd have to get rid of it. Now, stars are what you use to recruit those specialists. And those the two, and then a three and a four give you soldiers. Obviously, for every four, the four is better because you're going to get two soldiers for each one you roll. A five gives you a courage. And then a six gives you tools, and tools allow you to get equipment. And I'll show you the, uh, the, the equipment deck is right there, that little black deck right there. And I'll show that to you here in just a quick moment. So, um, but the big thing is, is that there's these red, white, and blue bonuses. So if you get, like, three ones, this would be a, a but they have to be in red, white, and blue. So a red one, a white one, and a blue one, you get the dead man's gift. 
and then you gain uh, 17 item points and two stars, and ignore the negative effect of the skull. So that's you know one of the reasons why. So I, I I misspoke earlier. There's two good things if you get skulls, but that's really tough to do, obviously. But that's amazing if you pull it off. But the other thing is, if you notice down here, if you get a straight, meaning that you have a one, two, three, four, five, six on all of your dice, what you do is you get to draw one uh, one reward, one of these awards of your choice. And then you know, and then you shuffle the deck. Now, normally you can only get these rewards uh, if you turn in. Um, you got to turn in uh, six uh, of your medals or six of your courage in order to get an award. Uh, but um, like, but that's an occasion that you can actually get that. And then you would get like the bonuses uh, that they give you as well. Um, so. Uh, but okay, so like three stars, it stands for leadership, and then uh, roll a bonus die, uh, re-rolling any skulls and add it to the result of your final tally. Uh, reinforcements, um, if you get that, you add four soldiers and then four soldiers to another unit. Um, fresh troops, uh, like you know, gain five soldiers. Uh, battle cry, gain two stars. Or if you move, ignore all the requirements of what you what it costs to move. So like you like you'd be able to um, if you didn't have the particular special Specialist to get into a certain spot, you could still move to that spot. And then a special find, um, you can find a used item, you must still pay its cost, uh, and it does not count towards the one per turn limit or gain for soldiers. So, um, and that's like obviously items get used or what have you. And so, so when you're rolling, you have situations where, you know, you'll have these two and you'll like really want to get you know, a, a red two, so you can get that red, white, and blue bonus. Now, it's it's more difficult than you think, obviously, because not only do you have to get a certain number, but you have to be using a certain color as well. But regardless, after you roll all of those, what you'll do is, you know, you'll just, you'll, you'll, you'll add, you know, whatever you earned, you know, it, you know, for for the rolls that you made and add those to your 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 player board and you know and after you've gotten done the rolling and you've done your upkeep upkeep of that um you then adjust your unit marker which then you know tells you to like say okay so we're still on the beach and we're gonna go ahead and put these uh, on two to show that we're, we're on there and then now you get to spend, so you can recruit these specialists. And like as I said, you know, you, the specialists have uh, these these stars up here. And then so you're going to use the stars that you've earned here. I'll, I'll cheat here and add a few more. And let me give me give myself a few more men too, so I can kind of show how that works. But you know, let's say we have a bunch of stuff there. And like so, if you wanted to like get a corporal and then reroll one die in your final tally. Um, you can spend courage or stars to save soldiers on a one-for-one -one basis when you have the hero. Uh, lose one less soldier per phase. If killed, the medic can still save a soldier before dying. Uh, you know, Minesweeper obviously ignores landmines. Uh, scout, add one tool to your final tally. Uh, this tool has no color, so you can just add a tool. Now, you might say, well, why? What does that mean? I forgot to show you this, actually. Um, so, like, tools, depending upon how many of them you got, you gain one item point, two is three, and so on and so forth. So, let, let's say you rolled, like, three uh, sixes, which is a tool. If you had uh, this guy that gives you the plus one tool, you would actually consider it to be four. And so now you wouldn't get six item points, but you get 12 item points. And you might notice that there are some locations on the beach that actually give you a bonus of these items if you're there. Like this one gives you that bonus tool. Uh, this one gives you that bonus star. This one gives you a bonus medal. So um, different spots, if you are in there, you'll get those after you roll those. Um, all right, so uh, then uh, you can trade resources, as I said, if you're in the same spot, uh, if you want to. And this is like kind of the tactical portion. Like you figure out how many, uh, how, how many, how much damage you're going to take, how many casualties you're going to get, uh, what somebody needs to be able to like recruit a certain, uh, oh, I didn't show you those. I'll talk about those in just a second, but something to recruit, uh, uh, a, a different, uh, person here. These are, and these are pretty cool actually. Here, I'll show these. So these are, are ones that um, are going to run you, uh, like, you know, the decoy, 
uh, sacrifice this in place of another specialist. So, uh, you know, you can, like, you know, if you get to that spot where it says that, you know, you got to kill off your hero, but you don't want to, um, you can use the decoy, or it can be one of the other ones as well. It doesn't have to have that, that specialist. If you have the colonel, all units only have to lock one die the first time they roll. Pretty cool. Um... Uh, Lieutenant, this is really good. After the final tally, any unit may trade one non-skull die with another unit. No unit may trade with another more than one other unit this way. And you can do this, you don't have to be right next to each other either. It's like considered like the lieutenant's like giving hand signals or, or what have you and letting him know. And then uh, the captain, change the color of one die in your final tally. This is obviously going to make getting those red, white, and blues way easier if you're able to do that. All right. Now, I was going to talk to you about those awards, and I'll talk to you about the items here in just a moment. So, uh, the awards, now normally, um, you you have to, unless you get the special uh, result of the straight, you have to draw one of these randomly. Um, but these awards just give you a certain, so one unit finds any one item for free. Uh, item can be used or unavailable. Um, add any one unit move twice during the phase if, if uh, it must spend the courage if it advances. So these are just things that are going to break uh, the rules, uh, so to speak. Of your other. So middle of honor, add three results of your choice. One red, one white, one blue to another unit's final tally. And so these are all like super powerful, super awesome like abilities uh, that you get. And like I said, normally they're drawn randomly, so you don't know what you're going to get, but you know, all of them are going to find a use uh, when you're playing. All right, so last, last but not least, uh, the different items that you can get. Now, once again, these are going to be uh, cards that are going to give you little special powers and abilities that are going to help you out trying to climb. Um, you can make trade resources with another unit you know, on the map with a carrier pigeon. Walkie-talkies just give you uh, uh, another two units. I'm not going to go through every one. Uh, mine detector. Uh, you ignore landmines for one turn. Um, binoculars. Change the result of one die, but not its color. Uh, can be used on locked dice or any other die, uh, like machine gun fire. So, you know, you roll a six on the machine gun fire, you can roll a one instead, you know, or the same thing with the landmines or whatever. Um, field radio, add five. And note, these numbers up here are obviously uh, the tool cost that it takes to purchase these things. Now, as you get further and further up, like here, the metal case, draw one award random, you get some good stuff like the Bangalore torpedo, reduce the defense of your sector uh, not a bunker, to zero, so you wouldn't take any casualties there. Or the flamethrower, subtract 10 from the defense of your bunker. And notice that bunker at the very end, you might not be able to see it, has a defense of 20. That means they're going to kill 20 soldiers. But if you have that flamethrower, obviously that's a pretty powerful thing. You're not going to lose 10. All right, so after you, uh, you purchase and everything like that, now you're going to move. And if you decide to move... You just move. You like, but you got to spend. Uh, normally, you spend the courage uh, to be able to move further up the beach, you know. And and so, like, if, if you know he wanted to move, you have to spend the one courage he has to do so. But he can move up, move up to that location. And you know, even though you know you're going to be forced to move again because of the fact that this uh, tells you that you have to. And you can like you you're going to reset your your die back down to the original setting if you will. Um, so uh, you, you know that, you know, since you've moved, you do get to reset that. And then, but if they stay behind, that's fine. And now you, you take your damage. In this case, uh, this unit would take six. So we're going to go one. This probably wasn't the smartest decision I've ever done. I just move up. That would six, leave me with a one. Ew. And this one would lose three. And you take those off. And let's see, we have three soldiers over here, one soldier over here. So uh, you know, we better hope that we roll really well and get a lot of soldiers next turn, or perhaps, you know, uh, like you, we can figure out, um, some way, maybe, maybe, um, you can, uh, somebody can pick up the carrier pigeon, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe we had planned ahead for that, that, that eventuality and, um, we, we got the carrier pigeon. So, uh, hopefully then, you know, one person will be able to trade with this unit uh, at a distance. But as you can probably guess, like I did that just to kind of show it to you, you're usually going to stay here and build up first and, and just and get ready. And then you're going to start that kind of mad dash to this location and then, you know, try to uh, climb up. And as you get higher up, obviously, it just gets more and more difficult. So you're taking more and more casualties. And so... 
uh, you know, it's 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 difficult, it, you know, and and that's one of those things that I always want in, in my cooperative games. I don't want them to be a cakewalk. I don't want them to be easy, and um, yeah, and sometimes you know, there's a lot of cursing at my table uh, when we aren't getting the right numbers uh, that we're looking for, which is fine. You know, I don't mind that because there are uh, several different ways the game allows you to get certain uh, equipment or certain things that allow you to mitigate. Uh, the, the dialogue, you know, the lieutenant is a huge one, right? You know, being able to s trade a die with another person, um, you know, so both of you can get a benefit, things like that. So, uh, you know, yeah, to be fair, like I said, I played the old one a lot, and I really, really liked it. So I knew I was going to like this. But um, if you're looking for a good cooperative game uh, that's got a really cool theme, uh, and you like dice... Obviously, this game's fantastic, but let me talk about that more uh, in my final thoughts. All right, that was the DJ Dice. All right, so I mean, I've kind of already gone over why it's cool. I mean, um, no, I'm 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 a big sucker uh, for cooperative games. Cooperative games were the the, the type of game that got me into the hobby to begin with. Um, they are the reason why I make these videos and and why I do it. I I I, I bumbled into Arkham Horror. 11, 10 years ago, or whatever it was, and I was hooked. And so if you give me a co-op with a really cool theme and some dice, I'm probably going to like it. Um, you know, the only the only times I don't like those games are when, like, um, you don't give the players a chance to, to, to make up for a bad role, right? Um, so you have to add in, uh, like, you know, like this game does, little cards that add little bonuses. Um, you have to uh, add in something that allows the players to work together. I, I mean, this game would not be nearly as much fun if you didn't have the options of the players all being able to work together and, and, and trying to, like, roll the dice and, and comparing the dice rolls and talking about, like, okay, should I, should I keep these? I, I really need soldiers. Well, no, I got a bunch of soldiers, and I got a bunch more coming, so, you know what, I'll keep these dice, and, and you know, we happen to be in the same spot right now, so we can definitely uh, trade and and then you know like you but I need I need tools uh, so so you keep those tool dice and keep rolling and then and then we'll, we can swap these out you know things like that and and so it does make everybody at the table kind of feel like you're on a team it feels like you're all part of a process um, and and plus when you have somebody that comes down to and they got their three dice and they absolutely positively whether to win or lose they need to get a three or a four to get like some more troops and everybody's staring at the table and they roll and i did roll one three uh and they do it i mean that's when you have that moment that 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 story moment that 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 cheer that you know very applauding high fives all around that sort of thing and that's what this game gives you it gives you those wonderful signature moments now i talked about the fact that i played this game a lot solo the original and i played this one solo as well quite a few times and um you know it's just it is a fantastic uh solo game it's it's one of those things where um you can knock out a game solo wise you know in 15 minutes 20 minutes and 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 you know well less if you lose obviously but and you know it's just it's 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 just like playing a, a, any, any solitaire game right i mean it's just it's it's a quick setup it's a process and you, and you can just go and and it's one of those things where uh you can try different strategies try different things you can do and it's just kind of fun to see you know what might happen um I remember when I played it solo, like, way back in the day, I would, like, give my soldiers names and things like that and come up with, like, different narratives or whatever. I mean, just because I, was, you know, just wanted to add that little flavor to it. You don't have to do that, but it was kind of cool. And I and I always remembered, like, um, whenever I whenever I played it, and this is not, doesn't mean anything, it's neither here nor there, uh, I just, I remember, you know, I, I know a lot of people would say, oh, it's like the Saving Private Ryan movie in that moment of, of Stormy Misha. But the one that I always remember, uh, strangely enough, is is um, the old Lee Marvin movie that also starred Mark Hamill uh, called The Big Red One. If you haven't seen it, I suggest maybe going to see it. But there's a there's a uh, a beach scene, um, you know, when they're they got and there's like if I remember correctly, there's like a Bangalore type of uh, moment where they're trying to you know push the the Bangalore torpedo 
uh, you know, up onto the beach so they can uh, take on an embankment. But I always think of that when I play this game. But regardless, that has nothing <laughs> to do with this game at all, but other than the fact that I really, really like that movie. Uh, but regardless, um, if you like uh, cooperative games, and the thing is, like, this game, if you go on the Kickstarter, it is so funded, it is so stacked, It's, I mean, which is kind of weirdly indicative of the original Kickstarter, which got ridiculously funded as well, and it had tons of stuff, like that canvas bag that I that, that I got. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like for a, for a little bit of uh, you know, just for a little bit of a donation, a little bit of a, a, a pledge, you're gonna get a ton of stuff with this one. And um, I I guess if if you're a cooperative fan, if you're a uh, solitaire game fan, if you enjoy. Uh, um, like uh, dice and randomness and mitigating chaos, those sorts of things. I think you're really, really gonna like this. It is, it is a, it is a tough game. Uh, it is unforgiving, and um, it is, you know, and it's one of those things where everybody gets to work together and play. So it kind of meets my cooperative requirements. I, I don't want any one player to feel like they're in charge and telling everybody else what to do. Um, I, I want everybody to feel like they're contributing to the victory, and I want the game to beat me up, even if I know exactly what I should do. I want the game to still beat me down and and you know and defeat me like one out of every at least two one two out of three times. Even if I know exactly what to do, I, I still want the game to have enough grit and enough tension and enough uh, friction uh, to prevent me from winning uh, on a regular basis. And and this one does it. So so there you go. Uh, that is uh, the D Day Dice. If you have any questions about it, please ask me. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video, and until next time on The Undead Viking, and I'm going to be telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.